Ladies and gentlemen, Tulsi Gabbard. Namaste, aloha. The World Hindu Economic Forum brings together so many great minds and successful people in business from a wide variety of professions and industries around the world. You really exemplify and, and are the living and breathing examples of the great contributions that Indian Americans have brought here to the United States and uh, that you as Indians have, have led around the world. Uh, as you heard from our Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman, Ed Royce, uh, who I'm very honored to be a member of his committee and appreciate his leadership. Never more than now has there been such interest and opportunity and excitement around the great potential uh, that exists between the U.S. and India and maximizing that opportunity between our two countries. We've seen that interest and that commitment and excitement at the top level between the leaders of our two countries. We see it amongst leaders in Congress. We see it in our U.S.-India caucus, the largest caucus that exists in the Congress. We see it in leaders in business, in academics, NGOs, uh, and so much more. Uh, I'm proud that we will soon be formalizing a, a recently established sister state partnership uh, between the state of Hawaii, my home state, uh, and the state of Goa in India. We will be having the announcement soon and look forward to being able to have a uh, contingent coming to Hawaii from Goa and sending a contingent of leaders from Hawaii to Goa to see what further opportunities there are to build more bridges between our two states and our two countries. Uh, I had the great opportunity and privilege of visiting India for the first time a couple of years ago and so appreciated the very warm welcome that I received uh, when I went there. Uh, first from Prime Minister Modi, who had invited me to come visit. Uh, you know, when he came to New York shortly after his election and I had a chance to visit with him there, the first time I'd ever met him, uh, one of the first questions was, uh, when was the last time you came and visited India? And I said, I've never been. <laughs> he said, you must come. <laughs> and I did go, just a few short months later. Uh, it was nearly a three-week trip. Uh, we visited seven different cities uh, during those three weeks. It was very busy, uh, but really incredible. Uh, I've talked with so many people who visited there, and, and one commonality that I often hear from them that they are struck by is uh, the sense of spirituality uh, that I think both Ravi and Desh uh, touched on in their remarks. Uh, and that's where, as we are gathered for this Hindu economic forum, uh, what I'd like to talk a little bit about is seva uh, and about karma yoga. Uh, understanding that as we are gathered here as Hindus, uh, this is not about religion. It is about spirituality. It's about love, compassion, respect for others, tolerance, humility, things that we find in each other, no matter our race, no matter our faith, nationality, or any of the labels that unfortunately tend to divide people rather than bring people together. One of the, uh, my favorite quotes from arguably the world's most famous Hindu, Mahatma Gandhi, is, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Uh, this is the heart of karma yoga. Uh, it is at the heart of the uh, spiritual principles that we find taught in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, this great gift that India has provided to the world, the words spoken by Lord Krishna to Arjuna, we learn there about Sanatana Dharma, our discovery of our real identity, who we really are, our eternal function, and where we can find happiness. Our true identity being that each of us is spiritual in essence, part and parcel of God, and our natural function is to engage in his loving service and the service of all of mankind. The secret there being this is where we find true happiness. 
We understand that karma yoga is rooted in this understanding of sanatana dharma. Karma meaning action. Yoga meaning in connection with or union with God. Understanding this very relevant application of karma yoga in our everyday lives, no matter our profession, no matter uh, what we do with our lives, we can apply these principles of karma yoga every single day. Everything we do, whether it be large or small, we have the opportunity to make our actions an offering, using our skills, our knowledge, our resources, uh, abilities, strengths, and talents in the service of God, and working towards the physical, spiritual, and mental well-being of others. Now, I know that we have a room full of experts on business, on the economy. You are on the front lines of creating jobs and making things happen in each of your communities here and around the world. I have no shortcuts or economic tips for you. I will leave that to the experts. Uh, but I'm here to share really how uh, my own practice of karma yoga in my own life has uh, set me on a path um, that has motivated uh, what I have done and what I continue to try to do with my life. Uh, you can replace the word wealth with titles, with education, with status, with social status. All of these things are superficial. But we can see in the world how when we have this misguided view, especially by those who are in positions of power, the consequences can be very dangerous. We see how many of the social challenges that we face in the world, much of the uh, difficulty that people are facing is rooted in this lack of understanding of our true identity, these basic Hindu principles, this understanding of our true purpose in life. This lack of understanding is what is at the root cause of the chaos and confusion and pain and suffering that we see in too many places. Mahatma Gandhi taught us through his example that we cannot overcome the divisive challenges facing our communities, our countries, and the world if we do not recognize and respect each other as children of God, despite our differences of nationality, race, ethnicity, religion, uh, and so forth. And this is why it is so important for leaders in our community, in every sector, leaders in our society, to be those who are motivated by a desire to be of service to others, by a desire to have a positive impact on those around them. Leaders in business, for example, you have the opportunity to care for the well-being of your team. If you have CEOs who are uh, willing to sacrifice the well-being of others, their team or others for their own personal power or financial interest, then we see how society suffers. People suffer. As a result of that, the implications can be far-reaching. The same goes for those in government, in education, in healthcare, in the military, in law enforcement. The list goes on and on. We cannot have a compassionate, peaceful, and prosperous society if the people themselves are greedy, selfish, angry, and envious. So this is the question that we must all ask ourselves. How can we, as individuals and collectively, contribute? How can we contribute to the development of a compassionate and caring society and world? And the answer is beautiful. The answer lies in karma yoga, in aloha, in respect, in love. The answer lies in the teachings that we find in the Bhagavad Gita. So if we apply these principles of karma yoga, with aloha, treating others with respect, caring for them, then we can begin to solve some of the most challenging issues that we face in our everyday lives and issues that we face around the world. Thank you very much. Aloha. Jai Shri Krishna.